Come on, Evie. I know you're around here somewhere. It's got to be around here hey, somewhere. Hey, 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 hey. What? I found a stick. Okay. Throw the stick. Hey, 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 that's the stick. Throw the stick. Throw the stick. Throw the stick. Hey, 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 I found a bigger stick. What are you doing? Trying to experience a dog's life. In the game A Dog's Life, every player will take the role of one of the dogs and attempt to bury bones into wherever your home space is. So to begin the game, every player is going to either choose or randomly take one of these dogs. And there are uh, six dogs in the game. So let me just zoom in here and we'll show you each of the dogs. So there is Bella, the French Poodle. We have Romeo, the Boxer. Buddy, the Labrador. Charlie, the Fox Terrier. Max, the German Shepherd. And Daisy, the Whippet. Once every player has uh, have, once each player have their dog in hand, they're going to draw from this little layer deck to choose where their home space is. So there are different home spaces on the map here, zooming out, and those are all around on the border of this entire board. So we have the, the circus area. We have a trailer park over there. We have a little farm area right over here. We have a golf course right here at the bottom. There is a playground right over there. And then there is a construction site at the very top of the board. So once you have your dog and you know where your home base is, you'll go ahead and collect your dog's deck. You're going to collect their color food marker. You're going to collect all of these piddle markers and then of course you're going to take the figurine that represents your dog and then your dog is going to start off inside their home space. So once you have the game set up here everybody is going to take their dog and stick it onto wherever their den is and every player is going to start off with their food marker on the four spot and one of your piddle markers in one of your bladder spots. Then you're also going to take the the dog catcher uh, car here and you're going to place that right at the entrance to where the dog shelter is. Which is actually marked with a black paw right on the on the board. To determine who goes first you go ahead and you roll this die. Whoever has the highest roll is the off starting player. But I've just gone ahead and set up stuff so we're going to say Charlie is the first player because I have him right on top here. And Charlie is hanging out. His den is here at the circus. So he's going to start going out on an adventure. So to win the game you must bury three bones in your den. Well how do you get the bones? Well there's a couple different ways to do that. If you look here in the center of the board there is this newsstand right here. Well, if your dog enters the newsstand and barks for a newspaper, you will pick up one of these newspaper tokens there, and you're going to flip it over in secret, and that's going to tell you where you must deliver that newspaper to. So, looking here, if we had grabbed this newspaper, this is saying that we have to deliver this to location number seven. And if you look here, this mail building right here looks like that one is number seven right there. So you always enter a building by going through where the paw is, get into the building, and then you'll deliver that newspaper. Then you'll flip over one of your cards and see what you get as a reward for delivering that newspaper successfully. 
you can also go to any of the places with a red paw. So the red paws here, those are restaurants, and you can try to beg for food. Begging for food is something that is good because every turn you have to move your food marker down one on your dog. So you'll want to try to keep them full on food. But you also have an opportunity to get bones there. And the last place you can get bones is there are all of these trash cans all over the place. So you can knock down a trash can and forge through and see what you can find in that trash can. Again, you can find food, which will keep you uh, full and give you uh, more turns to be able to play. Or you could possibly find a bone. So let's go ahead and let's take Charlie's turn. Now, let me just pick up his little plaque here, just so you can see. On everybody's uh, dog tile here, it'll tell you how many action points each of the dogs has. So, Charlie here has seven action points. Bella, the poodle, has seven action points as well, and Buddy has eight action points. And they do vary from dog to dog. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your food marker and go down one slot. And then Charlie has seven actions that he can do. So moving one space costs one action. Barking for a newspaper costs one action. Begging, knocking over a trash can, that kind of stuff does uh, take one of those action points. So basically anything you want to do causes you to use an action point. So Charlie's going to come out of his den right there into that first space. That's one action point. He's going to go over here one space, and there is a trash can right there. So he's going to spend his third action point to go ahead and knock over that trash can. So you put one of those tokens there, showing that that trash can has been rifled through. Then you will go to his deck. So you will go to his deck, and then you will take the top card, and you're going to flip that over and see what you have possibly found in that trash can. So looking here. It says this trash can has a sad dog on it. So a sad dog means that you don't get anything. Now, if I had pulled this cart when he was begging in a restaurant, well, he would have gotten three food. Uh, this also shows that uh, successful delivery and fighting I'll get into a little bit later. So unfortunately, with this trash can, he didn't find anything. So you just go ahead and discard this card. So that was only three of his actions. So Charlie still has four more actions to go. So let's see what he can do. Is he can go over here one more spot, so that's four actions, and there's a lamp post right there. So let me just zoom in there and show you that there is a, a lamp post right there on that square with him. And if you look at uh, Charlie's bladder here, put that, whoops. Put that right into frame here. Charlie's bladder has one piddle marker in it. So if you have any piddle markers in your bladder, you can go ahead and mark a lamp post if you're on it for an action point. So Charlie's going to go right ahead and he's going to mark that lamp post. Marking a lamp post prevents other dogs from moving through those space spaces on a turn. So if another dog ends up landing on that space, that dog has to stop, and they're not allowed to move any further on that turn. So he's gone ahead and done that. So let's see, he's done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has two more actions that he can do. So he's going to start going towards the newspaper stand. So he's going to go on south here. So he's going to take one more action to move to that spot. And in that spot, there is a water fountain. So Charlie can go ahead and take a drink from that water fountain. And if you take a drink from a water fountain, you go ahead and add one of your piddle markers from your supply and into your bladder. And your bladder can hold up to two piddle markers. So that is all that Charlie can do on his turn right now. So, whoever is using Charlie, they're going to go ahead and they're going to roll this red die to see how far the dog catcher's car moves. So, let me just tilt this back down here. And let's go ahead 
and roll that die, and the dog catcher is going to move four spaces. Now the dog catcher always moves in a straight line, and he can turn left or right if he's at a junction where that is possible. So with four spaces, Charlie doesn't want him to come towards him because, well, he's trying to get to this space here. But, hey, Bellow's way down here at the bottom of the board. So let me just tilt that down a little bit. Yeah, Bella is right down here, so he's going to send the dog catcher towards Bella. So he's going to go one, two, three. Now he has a choice about which direction he wants to go into, so he's going to turn and go right here. Now the next player will have to continue because you, they can't turn around, they cannot go in reverse with the dog catcher on their turn if they're able to move it. So the next player would be Bella. Bella has seven action points. Let's see what Bella is going to do. Now, each dog has their own personality and has things that they are good at and things that they are, well, not so good at. Uh, Bella is a French poodle, so she is prim and proper and, and she would never dig through trash cans. So digging through trash cans isn't her strong suit. If you actually look through her deck, um, the trash can cards don't come up with a lot of success. So it's not something that she should attempt to do often. So she's probably going to come over to this little Mexican restaurant and let's see if she can beg for some food. So seven moves here. So one, two, three, four. Puts her at the entrance. Five moves her in and now she can beg as her sixth action. So let's see what she gets. So she will take her card here and flip it over. And oh, in the restaurant we have another sad dog. So unfortunately she does not get any food from doing that. I should have moved her marker down by the way. So she still has one more accent so she can go ahead and she can move out of the restaurant there. So that way she is on the street and she'll be able to move around and see what else that she could possibly do. Now she's going to go ahead and she's going to roll that die to move the dog catcher. And the dog catcher is going to move two spots. And the uh, dog catcher is pretty close to her. And she doesn't quite like that. So she's going to go one, two. And hopefully the other player won't turn them and move it towards her. So lastly we have Buddy the dog. Buddy the Labrador. So, I'm going to move his food marker down one, and let's see what Buddy's going to do on his adventure. Well, the first thing Buddy's going to do, the Buddy's going to come out to the street for one action, and there's a lamp post right there. So, Buddy is going to take his piddle from his bladder, and he's going to piddle on that lamp post, because he sees that Bella's kind of coming this way, and that would stop her movement. So, that was two actions there. And let's see where he's going to go. So he has eight total actions. He's going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And end up right outside the newsstand. Then he's going to go ahead and roll that die. And he rolled a one, so he doesn't have much of a choice. That's where the dog catcher is going to move to. So let's see if Charlie now can get to the uh, to the newsstand and pick up newspaper, and I'll show you how that works. So again, we're going to move Charlie down one slot. So actually, I believe he should be at two. So at two here, he is now going to try to get into and try to grab a newspaper. So seven actions. That'll be one, two, three, four, five. And there's a blue paw print right here, so he can enter the newsstand. Six, and now he can bark for a newspaper. So we will randomly pick one of the newspaper tokens. And we're going to look at that in secret. And this tells us that we must take this to uh, location number six. And location number six is the airport right over there. So you go ahead and you take your token and you place that face down inside one of their mouth slots. Your dog has two mouth slots. Your dog can carry two things. Two newspapers, two bones, or one of each. That was all the actions that he had. 
So now let's have Bella take her turn and see what she can accomplish here. So Bella isn't paying attention to this piddle marker, unfortunately. So her food goes down by one, and she's going to go one, two, and she has to stop right here at this location because Buddy's piddle is here on the lamppost. So she must stop, and she's going to inspect the marking that is right there, and she gets no more actions. She can, however, still roll the die to move the dog catcher there. So the dog catcher rolled a two, so she's going to send the dog catcher one, two, towards her opponents. So let's just fast forward the game a little bit. I will show you what happens when you deliver one of the newspapers. So looking over here, Charlie has successfully made it to the airport over there. So Charlie's going to spend one of his action points to go into the airport and drop off that newspaper. He's going to take the token out from his um, uh, the, the mouth slot, and he's going to reveal it to all the other players to prove that he has delivered the correct newspaper to the correct space on the board. They're going to put that token back into the newspaper tokens and mix those up. Now, Troy's going to flip over one of his cards and see what he gets for a reward. So flipping over here, we see that delivery says that he gets a bone. So you go ahead and take one of the bone tokens and place that into his mouth. Now, he just has to get back to his home uh, den. And if he does, he can go ahead and bury that bone. Or if he wants to, he can try to grab a second one if he wants to carry that much. Now, something else that could happen is, let's just say that Charlie was right here and Buddy was right there and it is Buddy's turn and Buddy decides, you know what, I know that you have a bone in your mouth and I want that bone. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take that bone from you. So if you try to attack another player, both players are going to flip over the top card of their deck and they're going to compare the results. So we are going to look right here and you're going to look at the fight icons right there. And it's going to tell you how many fight points you have. So one paw equals one. So these are both equal. So unfortunately, well, nothing happens at all. So fortunate for, Tar for Charlie, Buddy does not gain anything. But let me just flip over another set of cards here that don't match. So let's just say this was the outcome here instead. So Charlie had a fight of two. Buddy had a fight of three, so Buddy would win the fight. So, when you successfully win a fight, that dog must drop anything that was in its mouth slots in the space that it was currently in, and it must move away one space. And then the other player can continue, continue the turn if they have action points left. So then if Buddy had an action point left, he could move into that slot for an action point, and then for another action point, pick up the item that was left behind and place that into his mouth. So again, you're going to be running around this board, attempting to collect the bones however you can collect them, knocking over trash cans, pilling on lampposts, and, and all of that, just trying to, trying to be the first to get three into your den. Now, the dog catcher, if the dog catcher ever lands on a space with one of the dogs, he automatically catches that dog and the dog will go into the dog shelter. If, however, the dog catcher lands one space away from one of the dogs, then you have an opportunity to flip over a card and see if you escape the dog catcher. So let's just say Buddy is now being pursued by the dog catcher. You flip over a card here and there's an escaping dog so he was not caught. If it had a picture of the dog catcher van, then he would be caught. If you are ever caught by the dog catcher, up in the top corner of the board shows you a building that represents the dog catcher. So you'll take your dog and you'll place your dog into the very first slot right there. Then when your turn comes around, you go ahead and flip over the top card in your deck and you're going to look at the bottom of the card here 
and it tells you if you exit or if you have to stay in there. So this is Buddy's card and it says he gets to exit the shelter. So he would successfully exit and then he would be able to take his turn. If, however, he drew a card that said he was still in there, he would move down to the next slot. On his next turn, he has an opportunity to draw two cards to see if he's able to get out. If he doesn't get out with those two cards, he'll move down to the third slot, and when it becomes his turn again, he will exit the shelter automatically. When you exit the shelter, you will automatically have one piddle in your bladder, and your food will be all the way up to four, because obviously they have fed you, and they have given you water. So you can continue and move around the board. Now, there are a limited amount of these trash can markers in the game. So if you ever end up placing the last trash can marker on the board, the big clean happens. And the garbage men come, and all the people come, and they take out their garbage, and all the streets get cleaned up. So you remove all the tokens from the board, except for the last trash can that was knocked over. And that does include all the piddle markers. Those all get washed away. And then you have a fresh slate to try to knock over trash cans and try to find some more stuff. But again, the first player to have three bones buried into their home den is declared the winner of a dog's life. Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com. So that is a dog's life. This is a terrific and fantastic family game. I had so much fun when I was playing this. Um, I didn't expect a lot from it, but it, it really got me. I, I really enjoyed playing it because you're, you're drawing those cards and you're like, am I going to find something? Oh, no, I don't find anything. I need, I, need, I need some more food or anything. Because if ever your food is at zero when you begin your turn, unfortunately your, your dog gets too tired to even act and they fall asleep right there in the space. They drop all of the items that they currently have and they have to go directly into the dog shelter. So you're trying to balance, trying to get food and get those bones. So the game could end up going really quick if you're able to find those bones very quickly. Or it could be a little bit longer, especially if you're playing with more players because there's more stuff going on. There's piddle all over the board and there's trash cans that are knocked all over. So you won't be able to scavenge as much and you have to figure out how to get into those different spaces. And sometimes if you're one of the stronger dogs, it might be a good idea for you to try to attack some of the smaller uh, dogs to see if you're able to uh, get the bones from them if they're able to find them quicker than you can and if you're able to, to get there. I like that each of the dogs has a specialty that they're kind of really, really good at. And this is also something that they're not so good at. So it's a good variety. So um, when I played... We, we played with certain dogs and then we're like, you know what, let's play a game, let's, let's play with different dogs. And it was a little bit different of a game versus the first game. Because in the first game, I was actually playing Charlie. And then the next game, I got to play the, uh, the Whippet. I forget what her name was. But she has the most actions of all the dogs because she is super fast. So she's able to zip around all the different places and try to get this stuff as quickly as possible where some of the other dogs are a little bit more slow but they're really really good at certain aspects of the game. But I definitely would suggest this as a great family game. I could see family sitting down at this and especially if you are a dog family or a dog lover this is a fantastic game. Now, I did have a few slight minor issues with my copy here. Um, for some reason, on the cards that I have, it refers to the shelter as a pound, but in the instructions and in the, even the pictures in the instructions refer to it as a shelter. So I'm sure that's just some kind of a, a, a printing update that needed to be done. And there were some slight minor, minor translation issues in the uh, in the in the instruction booklet but that didn't break the game or have any real effect in anything but i definitely recommend a dog's life 
So if this looks like something that you would enjoy, down below I'm going to have a link for their Kickstarter for this reissued version. There was a previous version of this, but this is the brand new version of it, and it has a lot cleaner art, and it's just kind of been, been elevated with its components, and the little dog figures are absolutely fantastic. So go ahead and click down below so you can go ahead and look at this Kickstarter and see if it's something that you would enjoy. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and help support Cloak and Maple. On the next screen, you will find my subscription link as well as my Patreon link. We can go ahead and click that to help support this channel. And thanks for watching.